butter my bread, butter my bread. Day two, here we go. Oh, going to go two miles today. Again, as you can see behind me, back to a, a soft surface, back to this grass field here. And uh, oh my goodness, woke up this morning. I didn't know what I was going to feel and I felt nothing. Now the foot is a little sore, a little tired. I, you know, it's it, the strength is gonna, it's gonna take two to three weeks, like at least I would say, to get that strength back. But right now it's feeling very, very good. So this is a not a good sign, a great sign that we are trending in the right direction. And with bone injuries, usually, uh, usually with bone injuries, once it's healed, it's healed. But you can't come back too early and you can't come back too aggressive, all right? So that's why yesterday was one mile, today is two miles, and it's why I'm back to a grass surface today, and tomorrow I'll be back on another grass surface, maybe a little bit of dirt, we shall see, but uh, overall, looking good that uh, I didn't wake up with pain in the metatarsals on my foot and in my big toe and everything that was going on down there, so, all right, I don't know what else to say, oh yeah, Gotta get my green hat on and then let's go get our two miles in, come on. studio and before we get to important priorities uh, for runners returning from injuries uh, we're gonna open this box as promised yesterday and uh, backcountry oh my goodness so this is a, another online store that you can buy outdoor gear mostly but they also do running shoes as well it's just backcountry.com I believe they're affiliated with steep and cheap don't quote me on that but I think they're affiliated bottom line this morning and I realize they're trying to make you know they're trying to make money they're a business but this morning I received a personalized email from a from an ultra runner at backcountry it was amazing he and he it wasn't like sales it wasn't pitchy he wasn't trying to get me to buy more shoes from him he was simply checking in he noticed that I had opened up the Nike Pegasus 36s yesterday and it was amazing now again I realized in his system he saw that I bought these from backcountry but I was blown away by the customer service and it wasn't like a generic message because just the way it was written it was very personalized and that my friends in the in the 21st century that is gonna win my business just saying like whether it's a, a, a brick and mortar store a running shoe shop brick and mortar or online or what have you it's that personalized service with ex expertise in the field that I am interested in for me obviously it's running shoes all right let's do this where is that knife there it is okay backcountry here we go and their hashtag is goat worthy because their their uh, their logo is uh, is a goat so yeah, that's kind of interesting all right what's it gonna be what's it gonna be ladies and gentlemen okay I don't even know what to say other than I'm very excited and these shoes I don't know how I got a hold of these because I'm I'm seeing on different different Nike websites that uh, these are not available until June 13th. So I don't know how I got a hold of these, but I did, and you're gonna like it. You are gonna like it. Ah, uh, can you make a guess? Here we go. Oh man. Oh man. Oh gosh. All right. One, two, and what color is it? Three. Oh yeah. The Nike Pegasus 36. Trail. The Nike, oh my goodness, look at that, so amazing. Of course, it's a light green, my favorite color green. Wow, oh my, let me just soak it in. It's got that Nike Trail logo on the side here. So this Nike Pegasus 36 Trail, it's a completely new upper. 
with some additional, they added some overlays. Remember we talked about overlays in that vlog where I broke down the different components of a running shoe and an overlay is basically a piece of, of rubber that wraps around the, the top of the upper or a section of the upper to help provide a little more stability, uh, uh, support, and yes, uh, Gore-Tex or like uh, waterproof features uh, through the upper. So because you're gonna be taking these out in the mud, in the rain, in the snow, well, yeah, I guess you, the snow as well, uh, it's good to have a little bit of overlay action through the upper. And yes, through the midsole, there are air units built into this midsole. So an air unit is basically, it's a built-in, pocket of air that provides a little more cushion so there's two separate air units in this Pegasus 36 trail one in the forefoot right below your toes and the front of your foot and then one in the heel and then on the outsole this is really interesting I actually wasn't aware at the depth of the lugs on the outsole when I bought them but they're looking like they are I'm just gonna say two to three millimeters uh, they're not very deep which means you're probably not gonna take this uh, shoe in crazy snow or you're not gonna take it through crazy mud, but you can use this shoe, I'm just gonna say, I haven't tried it yet, but transitioning from roads to trails. So I've talked about this in the past. If you live, let's say your house is in a, a small city and then it's like a 10 minute jog to get to some local trails. So you, you're on 10 minutes on pavement and, and concrete and then 30 minutes on trails and then 10 minutes back to your house on pavement and concrete. You don't want a shoe like the Solomon Speed Cross 5 that has these crazy lug depth. You want a shoe that can transition easily from uh, multiple surfaces from pavement to, to dirt. So this is exciting. Oh man. All right. Those are all my thoughts. I'm not going to give you the drop or the weight. We'll save that for my first impression. And yes, I'll probably be taking these out on the trail sooner rather than later. Now that we are back to jogging, I'm going to be patient, but it's exciting that dirt is on the horizon. So, okay, here's the deal. Uh, I'm off to a filming job tonight, so I, I'm going to be dressed up in a nice tie. You'll see me later, and then I'll be back to talk about these uh, priorities for you to consider when you're transitioning from an injury back to running. All right, see you in like six hours. And we're back. I bet you didn't think I could clean up. I could clean up a little bit. As a runner, you could probably relate to this. Like, I just like shorts and a t-shirt and my running shoes. But every now and then, you got to throw the tie on. So anyway, it was a good night of filming. And yes, I did just get off a very uh, important phone call for the channel. And I will tell you about it soon probably in the next week or so oh man just exciting things happening Never talking with uh other ahead. running and through the enthusiasts out there so all right let's get to it finally Never the topic to for today priorities for you as a runner as you return from running injuries all right here we go priority number one you don't want to repeat the reason you got injured right like that goes without saying but sometimes we get so excited when, the, when those legs start moving again, and we might uh, be a little absent-minded as to why we got injured in the first place. So for me, uh, and this is a challenge, huge challenge, you have to narrow down a lot of different factors as to why you think you got injured. Now listen, if you didn't have a traumatic injury, like rolling an ankle and you break your ankle, or uh, you fall on a rocky trail and you hit your knee, and the next day, like, your knee is all messed up. Like, that's your traumatic injury, and so you know, you know why you're injured. But a lot of times, as runners, we have overuse injuries, and these overuse injuries are hard to pinpoint why exactly we got injured. So, uh, it could come down to overtraining, like too much volume, intensity, so running too fast too often, uh, the surface that you're running on, uh, the shoes that you're running in, uh, the, the speed workouts that you're doing, there's a lot of not getting enough sleep and not eating well. Oh my goodness. There's a lot of different factors out there. So for me, I think it was intensity, uh, t running on too much hard, too many hard surfaces. And then again, getting back to some shoes that maybe didn't have enough cushion. We've already talked about that. So anyway, that's priority number one. Really try to narrow down why you think you got injured so that you don't make those same mistakes in the future. And priority number two, seek out professional help or somebody with a lot of experience in the running world. All right, so what, what do I mean? Uh, a physical therapist who has a running background, a masseuse 
or a stretching coach who has a running background. Uh, even if you need to, a nutritionist who really could help. If you just really don't eat well, uh, a nutritionist could be huge for helping you uh, put great fuel into your body. Frankly, I need to continue to eat spinach and eat as healthy as possible uh, moving forward. Like, I eat well. I eat really well. But I know I can always do better in that department. And then lastly, a professional coach or at least a, a runner who's been running for not two years or three years but it's somebody who's been running for 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, someone who has a lot of experience who could maybe look at your training plan and evaluate, okay, this is me, I would maybe change this workout, uh, put a little more rest in between this workout, uh, whatever the case may be in your training plan. So again, priority number two, seek out professional help or at least someone with a lot of experience in the running world. And priority number three, Cross training and rest is your best friend as a runner. Ah, it's so hard for me to say those words because I just want to run and run a lot and run high volume and run big mountains. But I know because I, ha I haven't been injured like this in 10 years. Okay. But this has been a, a humbling reminder, this stress into my metatarsals that I need to put more emphasis, uh, more priority into cross training. So going to the pool, going to a stationary bike uh, more often, and yes, building in a little bit more rest into my training schedule, meaning days off or uh, at least a, a day jogging around a grass field for three miles and then go to the pool. Okay, just like trying to take the, the pounding off of the, off of the body when, uh, when necessary, when needed. Uh, so anyway, that is priority number three. Cross training and rest are your best friends. Keyword, priorities. That's right, keyword is priorities. And the question of the day, how do you, what do you prioritize when returning from a running injury. Maybe it's something I already mentioned, that's great. If it's something new, awesome. Let us know down in the comments because I bet there's a lot of runners out there who are either injured now or are coming out of an injury very soon. In fact, I know there's a lot of runners out there watching who are in that situation because I'm getting your messages on Instagram. So hopefully some comments down below can help you prioritize your own return to the running uh, the running experience, this, this sport that we love. And there you have it. The Nike Pegasus 36 Trail is now in the rotation. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. See beauty, work hard. Oh,